Welcome, dear listeners, to episode 119 of the Reform Gamers, the show all about theology, video games, boarding the E3 hype train yet again this year. I'm your conductor host, Logan. And I'm his co-host, Adam. Adam, can you believe it's already time for E3 again? Like, dude, I'm not ready. I, I'm not either. My body's not, I'm ready. not ready. Reggie's going to show up I'm and looking be like, at... He's, your body ready? And I'm going to say no, and he's going to say, too bad. We're gonna, yeah. We're going to announce some games. All that stuff yeah, anyway. I was sitting, I was looking at our summer schedule, and I'm like, our summer schedule is like filled up. It, it, there's one vacation, but there's just all of these little things here and there. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, dang it. Like, thankfully, they start E3 kind of on like Saturday, Sunday, yeah. and then Monday, Tuesday, because yeah, the rest of the end of that week is busy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I should be able to watch most of them but it's also the same week of our vbs but i don't know if i'm gonna get to serve at our vbs this year anyways oh, yeah. but because you'll be too busy yeah i'm excited conferences, right well i've got basketball camp and oh, e3, okay so <laughs> you have real reasons then not not just e3 yeah. going on <laughs> yeah i feel bad about it but when you're at a small church i mean you know like it's always all hands on deck yeah so i kind of hate that i'm not able to be as involved as we'd like this summer because we are so kind of out of town yeah um, and yeah. I'd already committed coaching basketball, so I can't, you know, I want to honor that commitment, yeah. but it stinks. I hate that. I'm not being able to help. Yeah, no, I get so. that, man. I'm uh, working in a small town church too. So yeah, I know, I know how that is, but anyway, dear listeners, uh, just to give you a little bit of a heads up because I mean, like we've said before, May is a crazy month, uh, going into all of our, our summer activities, uh, both in ministry, uh, our episodes are going to be, they might be, they might sound a little weird at times. This one in particular, primarily because of vacations and us trying to get a E3 predictions episode out early. Um, we're actually recording this episode several weeks beforehand. So, I mean, by the time you hear it, it won't be the week before. Time is weird. Um, so, with that being said, uh, we're actually not really able to do a what have you been reading or what have you been uh, playing uh, that'll be current. Um, So in lieu of that, we'll actually do kind of like a double topic episode where we're going to talk about our um, game of the year prediction picks kind of things. Uh, And then we'll talk about E3 a little bit, uh, some of the conference times, give you the lowdown on that, and then uh, go over some of our predictions as well. Because this episode should come out the week before E3 starts. Um, or maybe a little bit earlier than that. So we're recording this ahead of time so we can get that out in time. So that way, if we're gone on vacation or, or something ministry related comes up, we're covered, you guys get this episode and you get to enjoy it. Um, but if you, uh, if you were supporting us on patreon.com slash reform gamers at just a dollar, you would have gotten this episode two weeks ago, I think is when it comes out. I'm trying to remember how all this planning yeah. stuff works. And I just, it's weird being an adult and having a calendar and like actually using it. You know, because when I was younger in college, I would get calendars because they look cool. I'd get like a Star Wars calendar or a Halo calendar. And I would just I would just look at it. Right. I would just look at the pretty pictures. But now I have a calendar on my computer that I actually use. And I'm like, how do I plan all this stuff together and keep my sanity at the same time? It's weird being an adult. It's weird sometimes. Anyway, uh, dear listeners. Let's just uh, let's just jump into the first topic, and this topic is actually brought to you. This whole episode is brought to you by all of our dear VIPs who support us on Patreon.com slash Reform Gamers. Support uh, the part of that. The Adam, can you can you thank our patrons? Because I'm having trouble <laughs> over here. Yeah, we want to thank our patrons for their constant support of our podcast. So thank you for doing that as usual. And again, without your guys' support, and hopefully you guys have been enjoying getting to hear some of your brethren on the podcast with True. with us. If you haven't been on the show yet, I, again, we can't have all 16, 17 of you guys on here, of course, but hopefully in some way we can show our appreciation to you guys individually throughout the year. So thank you for your continued support. Yeah. And without further ado, uh, let's go into our first topic for this episode here, which is our uh, game of the year picks thus far. Or Yeah. Yeah. Well, it can be game. It can be our current game of the year. It can be potential game of the year candidates by the end of the year. Okay. You can kind of answer that question however you'd like. Fair enough. Well, man, what, what would you say are some potential contenders so far? Because 2018 has been an insanely strong year for gaming. I would say it's stronger than even 
last year at this point, which is saying something because last year had some heavy hitters coming out of the gate with Neo, Nier Automata, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Breath of the Wild. An impressive year, but this year seems even bigger. And I don't know why that is exactly, but man, what do you think are some potential contenders for the title of Game yeah. of the Year this year? I don't know. I can't decide. Like, after starting, like, Listen to you list off those games from last year and doing this. I th- I feel like last year was stronger. I think there's some good games, but with some of these games, like I think of a game like Shadow of the Colossus. Mm. Okay, it's a big game, game, but it's a remake. Should it be True. considered in Game of the Year? I don't think so. There's a, There's been a couple of those kind of remaster remakes yeah. that are like, yeah, these are great, but... So some of the other games that are out there, and this is kind of in timeline, it's not exactly right, but Monster Hunter World... Had mm. a lot of people playing that. That's a good one. Um, again, Shadow of the Colossus, even though I wouldn't really consider it. Yeah. A big one is Celeste. Ooh, I mean, yeah. who, when, who would have ever thought that that game would be in this conversation? Yeah. Uh, Far Cry 5, uh, yeah. God of War. Would we put Far again, Cry I'm just, 5 I'm just, I'm just talking about big games. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not saying okay. all of these are legit contenders. Gotcha, okay. I'm just talking okay. about big the, kind of the big releases because we got far cry 5 mm-hmm. i'm even gonna, again throwing out sea of thieves i know it's it's not mm-hmm. actually in the conversation but it was a big game that was re- released from microsoft uh nino kuni 2 uh, mm-hmm. i said i think i said god of war yeah so that's kind of the the biggest named titles of the year i mean I, there wasn't anything is there anything off the top of your head that i'm forgetting not that I can think of. I mean, I know probably some folks would say, what, what about Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze? But that, again, is a port of a Wii U game. So, you know, I wouldn't really, exactly. wouldn't really count that, exactly. you know. Exactly. So, and I was in Nintendo, as strong as Nintendo was last year, I feel like, okay, they've got more third-party support. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah, games like Celeste, games like uh, Stardew Valley, we're yeah. playing our Switch but it's not been because of necessarily a major first party game. Right. And so that's kind of the big shift. Like at this point, everyone's talking Zelda. Like it's still this huge game. And I guess they had Kirby. That was kind of their major first party game was the oh, Kirby yeah. one. But Kirby did I don't know. Many, I don't know many people that are playing it. Yeah. Or have played. It doesn't either. mean it's not a great game or a good game. Right. But I just don't know the people that are playing it. And so, I would lean even if we're comparing the two. I liked last year's, okay. even though, but again, we got a game and I'll go ahead and just talk about this. I mean, we've, we've gushed about God of War so much. Yeah, dude. Like it's an easy, clear cut, at least contender, yeah. if not favorite from here on out for game of the year. And as a lot of people have talked about game of the generation. Yeah. And so, and after finishing, I'm now, com- I've completed it. I've I've got to the ending and man the way they finish that game yeah, to dude. go along with great combat the no loading screens the graphics I mean all things I mean this game is easily going to be one of the top we we'll even say top two three games of the year easily and so yeah. um that that's an easy clear front runner for me but I've even we don't have a what have you been playing, but I've I've started playing Nino Kuni too. Mm-hmm. And I mean that game had some pretty good critical acclaim behind it. Now, do I think it's gonna be better than God of War? No, but that's also a really, really strong game on the first half of the year. And I mean, I'll let you talk a little bit about Celeste. I mean, mm-hmm. I know we both love God of War, but Celeste has got to be in that conversation also. Yeah, no, and I totally agree. And I was actually uh if you hadn't uh brought it up i was actually going to bring it up because i was thinking about that earlier today and i was just like dude celeste like just was it just came out of left field man because we don't expect a lot of these indie developed games to be on that level of of kind of good Mm -hmm. but celeste was just up there the controls were tight the level design was amazing the soundtrack is fantastic actually own both uh, the soundtrack and the B side soundtrack, uh, the the story that it told, the the characters it had were all just um, really engrossing. It really just kind of sucked you in, and it was just a remarkable game that I didn't expect to be as good as it was. So it's definitely got to be at least in the talks about it, if not up there with God of War in the in the top spots. I mean, I, I know it's kind of yeah. a 
crazy thing to say, but that's how good that game really is. You know, we even did an yeah. episode on it, I think, a while back. Uh, it's just, it's, it is a uh, masterpiece, uh, I'm willing to say, of game design. And it's just so good. And even the way that they uh, enable the player to customize the experience to their style. You know, if you want to kind of cut the challenge down a little bit to where you have infinite stamina, you can do that. If you want to uh, enable infinite lives or invincibility, you can do that. You know, so it's great for any gamer, which is what helps yeah. make that game as great as it is, is that literally any gamer of any age can pick that game up and play it and enjoy it to their specific style, which I think makes that great, which helps make that game as good as it is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and kind of when we're recording this, you know, Detroit Become Human will have been out by the time this episode releases. We haven't gotten a chance to yeah. play it yet because, you know, we're not from the future. But uh, but if that demo was any sign of what the game's going to be, that'll be another contender that I'm sure we'll talk yeah. about later in the year. Um, and then of course you've got other games coming out in the year, like Pokemon Metroid prime four. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well they might, I mean, I don't know, but, uh, but I mean, we yeah, still got actually, I was, games. I was just kind of taking some notes just to discuss. Okay. There's, I think you can make the argument that the top two games that right now are probably Celeste and God of war. That's yeah. probably that top tier, probably that next step down a game like Nino Kuni two. I mean, monster hunter wasn't my jam. Yeah. But I know a lot of people really liked it. Now, I don't think that they'd probably say it's God of or Game of the Game I was going to say God of the Year contender. Cool. Game of the Year contender. <laughs> but <laughs> I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. And so yeah. and I guess what do we say about Fortnite? Didn't that come out last year though? It may have been towards the end of the year last year. Let me let me see if I can't pull it up real quick. But it ha- it really took off. I was gonna say it hit uh, like critical mass this year for sure. Going on consoles, going on uh, mobile. Like every time I hang out with my students, uh, I see them playing it on their phone or they're talking about it or something, you know. Uh, and it yeah. just. It's crazy how much mind share this game has gotten when I thought PUBG was going to be that game, but I hear everybody talking about Fortnite and hardly anyone talking about PUBG. It's, it is mind boggling at how quickly that game took over. And I just, okay. I don't, that's crazy, man. What you got? Yeah. It, September 26th, the battle Royale mode came out. Gotcha. The original mode came out in July of last year. But not too many people played that. But again, I would say, and I know it was released last year, but does the game have to be released in the year like that it came out to be considered game of the year if people are Ooh. still playing it a ton? Ooh. I don't know, man. Because, I mean, with the way that they're taking, like, they're still giving content, updating it. I mean, the amount of work that they've put into that game is, I mean, is nuts in the season. So I don't know. I think. You might see that, even though the Battle Royale came out last year, you might hear people putting that on their game of the year by the end of this next year, just yeah. because of the amount of support that it had. I don't know if that, you know, that's like there's an NBA player. This is kind of sports talk for 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 you video game nerds like myself. But there's a rookie who he was drafted two years ago, but he sat out the whole first year. He was injured. So he didn't actually play in his first season. So his first full season was his second season. So a lot of people are saying, is he a rookie or not? Because he didn't play at all his first year. Should he be considered rookie of the year? That's almost how I feel like Fortnite should be. Should this game be in the uh, game of the year uh, conversation? Well, yeah, it came out last year, but not a ton of people were playing it. But now that it's huge, should we put it in that conversation? I don't know. We'll 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 see what happens. I think that's the thing, because I mean, us on the show, we do whatever we want when it comes to game of the year. But definitely, uh, one of the things that's going to be interesting as we, as gaming's, as games evolve and grow and and get better, is this idea of games as a service, where they do the live updates and things like that, and how that's going to affect game of the year talks, because that gives games a significant boost in longevity 
And so we'll see how that, uh, how that affects things. And maybe we can get some feedback from our dear listeners uh, on that one. But yeah, man, yeah. Uh, Fortnite is a, is as of right now, it's kind of a Titan in, in gaming at least. Uh, so Crazy. much. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been playing it as much as I did. Now that school's out, I don't have the, the boys around and none of my, those guys are online. And honestly, I, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. Mm-hmm. I was playing a ton of it, but it was putting all those single player games is killing that backlog. Cause yeah, you know, when you're playing multiplayer, it's hard to get into single player. You only have yep. so much time. So yep. I'm not too upset that I've kind of put it on the shelf for a while. Yeah. So what do you think, man? Do you think we already have our game of the year for 2018? Or do you think that Spider-Man or, or a game that's going to release this fall is going to come in and kind of take that title? Because as much as I think Spider-Man is going to be great, I don't know if it's going to be God of War great. Yeah, here's what we got. We've got Detroit Become Human still left. Right. Red Dead Redemption. Oh, dude. I forgot about that. Okay. Spider-Man. I'm going to throw this game out there. I don't... I. I think some people are going to love this game just because it's got that old, old school feel. Octopath Traveler. We'll Ooh. see what happens with that game. Yeah. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers potentially coming out this year. Yeah. And then there's rumors of, again, rumors of a potential Pokemon game. So yeah. there's still some big games. Here's a little knowledge bomb that I heard on uh, some podcast I was listening to. You know, because people were saying Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption. Oh, it's going to be up there for game of the year. Mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Five. To my knowledge, and according to that podcast, I'm pretty sure it did not win Game of the Year when it first came out. Really? But look at, I just saw a stat today, actually, that the game has sold 95 million copies. Good grief. It's made more money. It's made more money than any movie, any game, any book. I don't know if books... It might be book two, but 95 million copies. This game's going to probably sell over a hundred million copies. They were, I just read something that said Persona five sold 2.2, like a very good 2.2 million copies. Sneaking Grand Theft Auto five, 95 million. So it may not have won game of the year and it it may have depended on what, um, like what else came out that year. Yeah. Well, where you were looking, so they may oh. not have wanted IGN or something like that. Sure. But you know, just because you don't win Game of the Year doesn't mean that you couldn't go on and do amazing things. So yeah. Red Dead Redemption Two could be this game that has a ton of lasting power, sells a ton of copies, but it may not still win Game of the Year. Same with Spider Man. Um, uh, it's going to be hard for something to beat God of War, but there's some. I mean, Spider Man looks crazy good. Yeah, it does. Crazy. And so I think if a Smash Brothers comes out or a Pokemon, like a legit Pokemon game, people are going to go bonkers. And I yeah. think those are going to be forces to be reckoned with. So for sure, uh, there's, there's still a lot to come out. But uh, God of War is is probably the, the front runner for me right now. Mm. Mm. So. Yeah. I don't know. Because Celeste was really good. Celeste was great. I just, uh, that, that was uh... a. That mm. that is a game like one A one B. I I remember when I first saw on IGN that this game got a ten. I'm like, what in the world is this game? I know, like, right? how is it? No one's ever heard of it, and it got a ten. Like, are you kidding me? And then I listened to uh, the kind of funny guys talking about it, and they were playing, and all these people started playing it. It's like, okay, I've got to. And then it lived up to the hype. Not too all, you know. There are a lot of games that get good scores, and you're like, again, you're looking for something wrong in it. Celeste, man, I couldn't find much wrong with it. I know. I didn't really have a complaint with the game, even when the game was really difficult and it just was a pain to play. I'm like, I'm still enjoying this. And I think part of it comes from the fact that when you die in the game or you slip up, it starts you right back at the beginning of that particular uh, part immediately. It's like, dude, I could easily do this a couple more times easily. And so. And it's got that. I got to get one more, one exactly. more level, one more. It's like, Oh, I got through this. Like you get that adrenaline. Like, Oh man, I can't believe I got through that. Let me see if I can beat this next one real quick. Exactly. And then you spend 10 minutes trying to do that. And you're like, Oh, I can't believe I got through it. Let me just try it once or twice. And it's that same loop of one more, one more, one yep. more. And that's, it may be the most addicting game. It may yep. not win game of the year, but man, it was, I think I sunk my teeth, teeth in it more quickly and deeper than even God of War out the gate. Yep. So, 
I can agree with that. And then again, I've got the platinum trophy for both games, so I mean, it's kind of tied. Oh, up there. Well, look at um, you! I <laughs> know <laughs> oh, that's that's just that's just what I do. I get the, I get them platinum trophies. Um, but yeah, God of War is no slouch either. It's man, fantastic. Oh. Fantastic year so far. I can't wait. I can't wait till we have our God of War episode. There's so much good stuff to talk oh, it, about in that game. It's gonna happen. We are gonna break that game down like uh, Brock breaking down stuff at the Forge. We're gonna mm, and we're gonna make it happen. So many good it's things. So good. Mm, mm, man. Anything else we want to talk about uh, with the game of the year stuff before we continue over to uh, boarding on the E3 hype train and getting on that party bus? No, I would just say let us know, dear listeners, what you're thinking uh, for first half game of the year, you know, pre E3 game of the year. Let us know if yours is Celeste or Sea of Thieves again. I know some people really like that game. I haven't played it, so I can't. I know it, you know, according to me, it looks a little shallow, but I know some people that have put tons of time in it because they like the exploration. It's like Minecraft. Mm-hmm. Not my cup of tea, but people love that game. So who's to say that that can't be your game of the year if you're really loving it? So. Let us know what, what your games are. True. As long as it's not Call of Duty or Destiny, I don't care. So, um, but yeah, just please don't pick Call of Duty. Ugh. 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 Anyway, uh, speaking of, of futuristic stuff, uh, Adam, man, E3 is coming up. It's that time of the year again. <sighs> Let's uh, dude. What? So let's let's start off with this because I mean we gotta know, we gotta know when the conferences are, who's doing what when. And that kind of stuff, man. What? When are the yeah. conferences coming to us? Yeah, let me just run through. I'm just going to run through before so that we kind of know where we're at. Because when we start going through our predictions and our hopes and kind of maybe crazy hype moments, like we don't want to say something that we already kind of know. Right. You know, so right. I'll try to do this. I've got a summary article here. We may tag it in the show notes if we want. But let me, I'll just run through the schedule and a couple things that we're expecting. Okay. Um. So. First up on June 9th, so starting on Saturday this year, and this is, I'm going to try to do the math in my head, so okay. that because who lives on Pacific time? So we'll go off Eastern time, because <laughs> okay. that's where all the normal people live. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so starting at 2 o'clock on Saturday, June 9th, you've got EA. So EA is going to kick it off, and some things that they're expecting there we're going to hear something on Anthem. We'll probably sure. see a trailer or some gameplay. There's been some stuff with the new Battlefield. There's been some teasers already coming out for that. Yep. They always really focus in on some of their sports games, Madden, FIFA. You wonder if they're going to um if they're going to do something with uh NBA NBA Live like that game's kind of dead. It's all about 2K, but Wait, they'll did, probably bring up something. Are they still making NBA Live? They are in the really? game. Seriously, the game was discounted immediately at launch last year. No one wow. buys it. I'm like, why are you still making this game? They cannot be making money. I like day one. I felt like I could find it for $40, Ooh. but Man, yeah, so they're they still making one. that. All I saw was the, so, the 2k game that came out. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see. I think one of the big question marks for EA is there's with the, with the battlefield, Okay, are we getting a new Battlefield game, or are they just adding Battle Royale to the old game? Ooh, so that's a good question. we'll see kind of what goes on there. That's one of the big questions a lot of people are asking. So moving to Sunday, this will be at four o'clock Eastern Time Zone, uh, June tenth. We've got Microsoft. So again, everyone, you know, I, I hope Microsoft kills it. You know, the world's a better place when <laughs> the video game world is a better place when Microsoft is crushing it. Uh, we don't know a lot. You know, we're thinking. Should we hear something about Crackdown? Are we going to hear something about a new Halo game? I hope so. Are we going to hear something about Gears of War 5? You know, there was kind of that leak via Walmart a few weeks ago or uh, a week or so ago of maybe a new Horizon game. I mean, they just came out with a new cool controller for, like, accessibility things. So oh, yeah, the adaptive what's, controller. What's gonna, yeah, what's going to be their big thing? Because the big thing last year... Had the Xbox One X come out yet? It hadn't come out yet, I don't believe. No, no, they were that talking was kind about of it the though. Big hype, yeah, that was kind of the big hype of. All right, we've got this new system. You know the uh, the the way out guy was on there, and he was dropping you know all those swear words at people. He was kind of a big thing for them. Oh, I'm yeah. sure they'll talk about Minecraft and some skin at some point. But that's Sunday, 
at four o'clock. All right, I'll, I'll get this moving a little bit quicker. Uh, also on Sunday, this would be at nine thirty in the evening. Bethesda is going to be doing theirs. They've already announced uh, Rage Two, so we'll get something with that. Probably a a trailer, maybe a release date. Seems like that game may be kind of far out. All right, what do we do? We get more Elder Scroll stuff. Is, is there Fallout news? Is there Prey stuff? We don't know a lot from Bethesda of what they're going to do, but Bethesda did a pretty great showing last year, so I'm interested to see kind of what they do. They'll probably talk something about Wolfenstein on the Switch, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, since that's still coming out, then kicking us off, kicking us off on Monday at one o'clock, you got Square Enix. Uh, the big thing with Square Enix, of course, Kingdom Hearts three. We're gonna get a lot on that. Um, potentially a release date. Uh, I think the the dream would be to get a release date for that this year. That might be a long shot, but that's the dream. We're also thinking Final Fantasy seven remake. Are we gonna get anything with that? Dragon Quest eleven, and of course. There's going to be something with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, their big game this fall. A um, couple more here, of course. Ubisoft, also on Monday, 4 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard. Division 2, Crew 2, Skull and, Skull and Bones. That's the, Do you remember that one? That's oh, the yeah, that was the game. pirate, uh, the ship battle one, kind of like Assassin's Creed when they had those in the game. Yeah, yeah, kind of got mixed reviews. Some people are like, this looks cool, but how much freedom is that? Now, there was some news that was recently released that this has already been pushed back into 2019, mm. so it's not a 2018 release, but I'm sure we're going to get more info on that. Will we see something on Beyond uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2? That was a big thing they did last year. A lot of people are hoping for a Splinter Cell game, maybe. Uh, again, we'll see kind of what happens there. Uh, then the granddaddy, at least for us, Monday night, 9 o'clock, Sony is going to have their showcase. Um, some some givens, Last of Us Part 2, they've already announced that they're going to be talking about that. I'm sure we'll get some Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Death Stranding is going to be there, they say. Spider-Man, uh, we'll get more of that. Uh, I don't know if we'll... Yeah, that, those are kind of the big ones. And then, let's see here, the last one. On Tuesday, Nintendo kind of gets its own day. I think the PC show may, al- may also be on Tuesday. Yeah, oh, we don't care um, about that. Yeah, wink, it's wink, kind of... Nudge, I, nudge, feel, just messing. I kind of feel bad. We're doing, like, the state of the consoles, and we're like, eh, and, you know, PC gamers, whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, just, it's just, I mean, you know, it's just... It's there's too much. There's too much. Um, And then, so, Tuesday at noon, Nintendo will be doing their uh, Treehouse event. Uh, some things that we know it's going to focus up on Super Smash Brothers, so that's going to be a, a big one. We'll get some stuff on Mario Tennis Aces, which releases pretty shortly after E3. You know, there was a lot of things teased last year. Yoshi, Metroid Prime, mm-hmm. Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Where, are we, where are we at? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Where are we at with those? Do they even do some random? Because there's been some hirings recently for some Zelda creators and writers and developers do they just do another one of those things of we're not anywhere near it yet but here's a title screen for the next zelda game in two years why not nintendo can do why whatever not? they want at this point why not just do it i freaking not so that's kind of a rundown of the schedule just to kind of give us some parameters of what we're looking for um now i'll, I'll kind of let you take it is there is there any one showcase that you're maybe most excited for uh nintendo which is weird yeah. to say considering several not several but a couple of years ago i was just like i didn't care about nintendo but now that i've had my switch for well over a year and i'm really enjoying it i want to see what else they're what, what they're gonna do with the system you know uh, and we all know dear listeners come on y'all heard me when i was even recording this section where I was freaking out because we got two Metroid games announced at last year's E3. You didn't have you didn't even have to listen to the episode because you could hear me wherever you are on the on the planet. Um, so I'm I'm interested, man. I want to see I want to see uh, what they've got uh, what they've got going on because I mean it just feels like with PlayStation we kind of know what what's going on. They've kind of already yeah. shown their lineup, so it's like okay, I don't really. I know what to expect. Xbox is a little bit more of a wild card, and I'm interested in that too. Mm-hmm. 
but I'm more interested in Nintendo because I actually own a Switch. You know, if I had an Xbox, like if I actually owned one, um, then I would definitely be more interested in it. Uh, but at the same time, Nintendo is the one I want to see the most. Yeah, man. I and I think I, I said this maybe last time we recorded a few weeks back. Like I've been looking online at like Facebook Marketplace, you know, let go. I've been looking for a cheap Xbox, but I keep coming around to I don't have a reason to buy one. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping they yeah. give me a reason to buy one yeah. at E3. I like, hear you. Give me a give me a couple, you know, a couple maybe new IPs, some new games, like if it's Halo, it needs to be a lot of changes because that's not a big game that's really going to get me sucked back in. But I would love to have a reason to buy an Xbox, but there hasn't been one. Yeah. Like there's no, every time I'm like, oh man, this is a pretty good deal. I'd only have to pay maybe a hundred, 150 bucks with a, a game or a controller. I'm like, but why? It's just going to sit there because I don't have any exclusive games really that I need to play mm-hmm. that aren't on my, my PlayStation. So I'm, I'm excited for Microsoft because I'm, I'm thinking they got to do something big. They've yep. got to. I'm really excited for Square Enix. Like Kingdom Hearts Three looks amazing, so I'm excited about that. I, I love the the Tomb Raider game, so uh, that's an exciting one. The Division Two over at at Ubisoft. Uh, I didn't jump into that the original Division until really late in the game, uh, and I think you're right with Sony. There's we know of a, we know a lot. So what are they gonna do to drop the mic what's going to be their mic drop moment i think that's kind of the biggest question mark with sony of we know so much is it going to be a release date that kind of everyone freaks out about is it going to be a game that we're not aware of is it going to be something like dreams that they give us more of and everyone finally like gets it of like holy cow (laughs) no one's ever gonna get that game dude again who knows is it going to be death stranding we don't we know that they're going to be good but what's going to be the big thing yeah. that really sets them apart? And again, Nintendo, I think Nintendo has the most ammunition sitting in their back pocket. Yep. Now, how much they give us will be a different question. You know, right. are they really, do they have anything to show us on Metro Prime 4? Do they actually have a Pokemon game? You know, do they actually have some of these other, you know, Smash Brothers getting this year. Is there another Mario sports game? Like, and I, I'm going to leave that for my predictions or my hopes, but they've got a lot of ammunition. But I think it's crazy, but I'm really going to be tuning into Microsoft probably. Oh, wow. That's the one I'm anticipating most because I think they have to do something big. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they I do. don't think Nintendo or Sony or Ubisoft, I think none of them have to do anything crazy. Like I think they're all they've we know what they've got they've got a lot of good stuff mm-hmm. we have no idea what Microsoft has up their up their sleeves that's true but they they have got to have something that's maybe I could be severely disappointed we could get there and yeah. they could not have a lot and I may be like wow that was disappointing but I just I keep coming back to they've got to have something good yeah they've just got to and so I'm excited to see what it is yeah and I, I'll hand it to this I mean I, the past. Uh, E3s that we've had where Phil after Phil Spencer has jumped on board and, and took in the reins over Xbox, you know, they haven't necessarily been like mind blowingly, uh, insanely awesome. Kind of like what Nintendo has been putting out, um, or at least last year that I can remember in recent memory. But I mean, the, the stuff that they've announced with the games past the backwards compatibility, um, I mean, they've been, ma- they've been making good steps in, in showing off yeah. some pretty impressive things. So, I think, I think, I feel it, man. I feel it in my bones. There, there's something that's going to happen at the Xbox conference where it's just going to be like, oh, snap. This is the, like, this is the start of coming back to the Xbox 360 era of, of kind of Xbox stuff where they're just, they're just crushing it. So I, I feel yeah, like, it, man. I feel the rumblings. Yeah, I've got the, I've got the PlayStation. I've got my Nintendo. You know, if, <sighs> You know, we always like no one has to win. We can just be fans of everything. But I would love to some degree, you know, my Sony fanboyism. Yeah. Or what do we call it? Our Sony poniness. Yeah. Sony uh, poniness. Say, uh, that we talked about last episode. Like part of me would be like, dang it, I wish Sony was the one that everybody was talking about. But if Microsoft came out and was like showcase of the of the event of E3, 
I wouldn't necessarily be mad about it because that yeah. would mean I've got legit reasons to buy a, a, an Xbox, yeah. an Xbox One. Just so saying, I, I'm actually rooting for them. I would yeah. love for them to. Do I need to spend the money? No. But I, I it's sitting there in my little play fund. If mm-hmm. if they can do enough to impress me, so I'm yeah, I'm hoping for that. I really am. Yeah. Same here. Just saying, Phil Spencer, you, all you got to do is release a sequel to Cameo, that sweet launch title you put on the 360, and uh, I'm all, I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but I actually really like Cameo. I thought that was a cool, uh, cool game. Um, but anyway, uh, so let's just let's just jump into it, man. So what are what are the things that we're kind of I mean predictions a little too mystical for for us here at the Reform Gamer. So I guess what what are we hoping to see? Uh, get announced. What are we hoping to see at, at E3, man? Let's let's do our top four, man. What what's your first one that you got there? Uh, this one literally just kind of came as we were talking through some of these different things. I believe, I think we're gonna see something about Fortnite on the Nintendo Switch. Ooh, uh, I don't know if it will take. be if it will be a fall thing because I don't know if it will release with the online service Mm -hmm. but it has to come eventually it's not some huge graphics intense game it's going to be able to run on it it's going to be able to run smooth i think with the way that they do the uh the epic account or whatever you don't have to have a crazy good online infrastructure maybe compared to like 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 sony and xbox has and i don't think nintendo's has to be as fully flood you know functioning as they're eventually going to want it to be if Mm -hmm. as long because if we can get it on our phones without any online infrastructure other than the epic account maybe we don't have voice chat which would be a big bummer and you're gonna have to use like discord or something like that but i think we're gonna find out some big news on fortnite on the switch and here's the kicker though it may not even be in the treehouse or in the uh the direct i keep saying treehouse it may not be in the direct. It could actually be in the the treehouse like they did. Yeah. Metroid Prime. I was or not say, Metroid yeah, Prime, but the, the Metroid uh Samus Returns. The re- Samus Returns. Yeah. I think they could do something like that with Fortnite and cause that was a cool thing. I was like watching Treehouse last year and I'm like, holy cow, did they just announce a new Metroid game in this yeah. treehouse? I, I think a lot more people are gonna be watching that this year. I remember because you you texted me like, dude, did you see it? I'm like, see what? They're lame direct or not? It wasn't really a lame direct. But I'm like, what? The direct where they showed off Metroid Prime Four and like fulfilled all my hopes and dreams as a child. And you then you were like, yeah, but they also announced a new Metroid. I'm like, yeah, dude, I know. I saw the title card. And you're like, no, dude, there's two of them. I'm gonna, and I like yeah. my head just exploded. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh man. So that's that's my first mm. kind of prediction slash something I'm hoping for. Mm. That's a good one. Uh, my first one, I'm going to throw this out there. Xbox announces three new exclusive IPs. Okay. I'm going to say three. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping there's more, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it safe with at least three because last, well, a couple episodes ago, when we were talking with Gareth, he had mentioned that Phil Spencer was going over to uh, Japan, speaking to developers over there. And I'm like, okay, I can see a little bit of a JRPG revival coming on the Xbox like you guys I uh, have a Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, and all those games. Um, but we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I think they're going to at least announce three new exclusives, and hopefully they won't cancel them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but that's that's the one I'm going to throw out there at the start of the gate. Yeah. Now this one is inspired by a, uh, a Collins Last Stand. Uh, what is it? Side side quest. Side quest. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of his videos that I recently watched today. I don't know who's gonna make it, and I don't really care. But you know, we've been we've been asking what are the what's the question mark for Sony? SOCOM is gonna come back. Give oh. me some SOCOM. Oh, if I, if I, like those games were, and again, even watching him talking about SOCOM, like those were kind of the first major online games for. Uh, for Sony, you know, the original, the second one, like I remember playing the the one on my PlayStation 2 just every Sunday with my boys. All right. We call them SOCOM Sundays. Go home, mm, eat lunch. Yeah. Let's jump on SOCOM. We'd have our little squad. I think with the Battle Royale phen- phen- phenomenon that oh, we're in right dude. now, that could very well be accessible and happen. I mean, it's like, OK, you want PUBG on the Xbox? 
we've got SOCOM. Ooh. It, it, it could be the exact same model. I can see that um, happening. And then throw in some of the, you know, a good a solo, you know, story. But, and then you could just do your normal online stuff also. I think that, again, there's the studio that made them is shut down, but Sony's got to still own the IP. So why not yeah. give that to one of your established IPs that's maybe we haven't heard about in a while or even a, a second party studio that you work closely with and, and give us a, give us SOCOM. I would, I might lose my mind. I love the SOCOM games, at least the first and the second one. And then there was even one on the, uh, uh shoot what was um the psp that was pretty good and so i would love to see socom returning nice man i can see that happening uh so my second uh hope and this one uh goes out to you adam and all of the other people still on vita island uh vita successor gets shown off or announced or something like that i'm just i'm just thinking man when I heard the news that they were ceasing production on the physical carts, I'm like, why would they do that? They could either be just walking away from the Vita, or they're going to start production on new carts. Maybe not even carts at all, but they're going to yeah. do something that comes out to kind of compete with the Switch a little bit. Because I'm just, I don't know, man. They're, I know Sony's done some stupid things with the Vita, and they haven't supported it the way that they should have. But I got a feeling, I just got this gut feeling today. Where it's like, they probably learn from their mistakes. They see what the Switch is doing. There might be a Vita successor coming around the corner, and we don't even know. I wonder know if, it. yeah. So, I mean, you could think of something like PlayStation for, like, Go or something like that. They've done the PSP Go, I think, before, something mm-hmm. like that, where, okay, we've now got this PlayStation Now database where it's not ideal to stream. Maybe you can somehow download those games directly to the this Vita successor you've got the you know they've somehow figured out where you can play your playstation you know you don't have to remote play you it's an actual system somehow yeah it, they would be seen. nuts it would be nuts i would love that my poor Vita might officially die then like i'm actually i'm, I'm so excited nino cooney 2 i'm remote playing it in bed <laughs> on my vita i'm so excited to be playing my vita again because i haven't played it in probably two or three months but man i've been I'm just like holding it. I'm just like, man, I love this little freaking device. Oh, remote play. When it works, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree. No, that would I be, agree. that'd be crazy. I, I, I mean, I don't mean to get any, I don't, don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but I'm just saying like, I've got, I've got a gut feeling. And like, we don't have any inside knowledge of what's going on in the gaming industry. It's just, I just got a gut feeling today. You know, how you, how you, you know, you're taking a shower and you're thinking and you're like, wait a minute. You, know, you connect the dots, and you're just like, eh. mm. well, if you think about it, there's even been some um, patents over the last couple of years of different things that they were doing. So it's not totally far fetched. There, there have been patents over the last couple of years where it's like, you know, it's kind of looked like a Sony Switch of sorts. You know, now they may have just patented stuff just to patent it. Sure. Or sure. It, there could actually be something in the works. I don't know. That'd be awesome. That'd be fun to see. I'd lose my It'd mind. It'd be interesting. I would lose It'd my mind. Anyway. My Adam. wife might lose her mind if I'm playing more video <laughs> games in bed. She, she'll be, be losing your mind if you pick up a PS4 Go and a and an Xbox One X. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. I'm like, I already think I... Yeah, anyways, that's a whole different conversation. Anyway, man, uh, my what's, third what's one? one. My third one. Uh, man, I was kind of hinting at this earlier. This is my my pipe dream. This is the one that, you know, I love to see so calm. I'd love to see Fortnite. but if I could say th- so it is said, so it will be, give me Mario strikers on the Nintendo switch. Mm. I want a full fledged. We've got, I, again, the tennis games are fun and all, but seriously, you've created probably one of, if not the best soccer games ever. You gave us a decent port on the Nintendo. Wii. Mm-hmm. give us, a switch version of Mario Strikers. You don't have to rewrite the book, but bring in all this huge lineup of characters that you have. Give us some good online stuff. Man, that game would sell like hotcakes. I'm telling you. Yeah, it man. would it would go that game would sell more than Mario Tennis. I mean, I would guarantee it oh, cuz soccer sure. is huge. That. If they made a Mario Strikers, it would sell better 
than Mario Tennis, Mario Golf. It's probably the best sports franchise that they have, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think I think it would it would crush it. So that's kind of my my pipe dream. If I could have anything, I would uh, I would love to see Mario Strikers on the Switch. <laughs> I've had so much fun with the GameCube version over the years that that would just be like, I would be texting buddies from college being like, when are we getting the gang back together? Yeah, Because we all used to play that game so much and competing in our dorm room. Uh, it was great. Yeah, man. Good stuff. My, uh, my third one then is going to be, uh, we're going to get some Pokemon switch gameplay and okay. a 2018 release date. Oh, because here's what did I'm you f- see the rumors recently? No, what was the rumors recently? Like there's a there, there's some like leaker. He's like done all this like weird research. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he gets it, but I think they announced it on kind of funny games the other day. Potential title of Pokemon or Pokemon, uh, P- Pikachu Go or Go Pikachu or mm-hmm. Go Eevee. As potential huh. wondering if there's going to be some implementation with Go, but what what's your what's your hopes? What's your huh. prediction? That's dude. I don't know how they would tie that into Pokemon Go, but that'd be cool if they I could have pull no that idea. off. I don't, it would, but I I just want to just give us a. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm jump. I'm kind of hijacking yours. I'm sorry, no, man. That's good. Let's talk but, about it. Uh, just give us a normal Pokemon game. Yeah. Don't don't make it weird. Yeah. Just give no, us a, a a console quality pokemon game but what were you thinking when you were in your prediction um here's what i'm thinking of what the game's gonna be it's not going to look as like next gen as we want i think it's gonna look Mm. similar to the games we have on the 3ds currently but they're gonna look sharper and with better resolutions and textures um Mm -hmm. but i think that's how they could get it to release this year if they take some of the stuff that they've got already clean it up a bit spruce it up a little bit add some bells and whistles to it that's how they're going to get it on the Switch. And I could be totally wrong, and they'll just use the engine they use for uh, Pokemon, uh, the the Pokken game, which I guess mm. that other developer owns that. But, I mean, still, unless they do something like that, then I could totally see that. But I don't think it's going to be... Um, well, I don't know. I guess they could do whatever they want. I, but, I mean, I, it's just the thing is, we didn't get gameplay last year. And so I'm thinking yeah. if they want to get the game out this year it's going to look like a higher res, better version of what we get on the 3ds currently. So, yeah. Um, but that being said though, uh, I think it's going to be, it's, it's still going to look awesome. I mean, it's still going to be fun. It's still going to be the Pokemon we know. And I hope it's that Pokemon. I hope it's not as streamlined as sun and moon because sun and moon. Sorry, dear listeners. was kind of boring to play because of how streamlined mm. it was. Um, but but we'll we'll see. I, I think it's going to come this year, though. And I think we're going to see some gameplay of it this year at E3. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, if they've got it, it's got to look better. It, it can be similar gameplay and stuff as a Switch but or as a 3DS. But as as I mean, I guess compared to the regular Game Boys, the 3DS ones, they look good enough. Right. But I mean, they've got. Another company may have made Pokken Tournament, but that's still Nintendo's IP. If, and if they said we want those character models to some degree, they've probably got some weight they can throw around to get those. True. But uh, I think it's possible. But I, like I said earlier, I just want uh, give me a, give us a relatively traditional. Now they may go out and rewrite the book like they did with Zelda. Ooh. I mean, they've kind of they didn't quite do it with Mario Odyssey, even though. Um, there was so much there. I, don't, I wouldn't say Mario Odyssey was this crazy new style of Mario just because it, it was in the 3D, you know, Mario 64, Mario Galaxy still style of gameplay. But, you know, they may come out and be like, we rewrote Zelda. We've created this open world. We're going to rewrite the way that you think about Pokemon. Now, that might be a bigger that might be a bigger endeavor than yeah. Then we may that may be a next 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 Pokemon game that may not be this one, yeah. but again, who knows how long they've been sitting on this? That's true. You know they 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 had Zelda ready at launch. They had to have had. I mean, Mario Odyssey was already in the works at launch and before that. You know these games don't just happen overnight. 
So who knows how long they've been preparing a Pokemon game. It, it could be more ready than we think. You just never know. That's why yeah. we talk about Microsoft. Why do we hope Microsoft drops? Because there's got to be something out there that we're just not even aware of. I think Nintendo's got a bunch of that up their sleeve. Mm. A bunch of that. So mm. Get me hyped, I would love. I, I'm not even a big Pokemon guy, but I would buy a, a new Pokemon game on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, you, just have you would. To. Yes, you, you just would. have to. And so I do. Uh, I I would I would play. I've only played one, but that would be my second one, no doubt about it. My dude. Uh huh. My dude. So I guess my last one. Pretty simple one. It's nothing crazy. You know, we've been talking. This one's not a super unknown on on Sony's end. But uh, I think we get Bloodborne too. Ooh. I think we get we get um, a trailer or some sort of weird, eerie thing. You know, there was some stuff either last year or at PlayStation Experience mm-hmm. that people were like, "Is this uh, Last of Us two? Is this a Bloodborne two teaser? What is this thing?" You know, it was like a bones kind of hanging and blood. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. And everyone was like, what is this from? And we never really found out. Yeah. And so I think, I mean, it would be silly if they don't make a Bloodborne 2. Uh, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I've got the 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 guts to go back and play another one. <laughs> oh, I definitely but, do. Bring it, man. Uh, actually, but actually, a few, maybe a few weeks ago, because when it was PlayStation Plus free game, I re-downloaded it. And I just, lo- you know, I loaded it up. I had mm-hmm. my save. And I was running around the world doing all right, and I haven't played the game in a long time. So there you go, man. who knows? I, it may be something that you pick up and kind of get the feels. But the thing is, I didn't have any problems for the most part. You know, once you learn how enemies are in just the overworld, I did all right. But I really struggled with the bosses. Yeah, like, the bosses That was just something. Um, but I enjoyed the overworld enough that I might give it a chance. But I think, I, I don't know if it'll be a direct follow-up. Or if it'll be a, a whole new story lore, but I think we get a a Bloodborne too. Nice, I like it. So here's here's my final one, and I, this is again. I was thinking about a lot of this stuff today. I was thinking, I was like, you know who we haven't heard from in quite some time? What developer studio we haven't heard from in a while? Rocksteady, that studio that put out those sweet sweet Batman Arkham games. I haven't heard anything okay. from them in a while. So I'm thinking. They're going to be there at E3, and they're going to unveil their new game, which is going to be a Superman game. Wishful mm. thinking. But I think they're going to show off their new game, and it's going to be a Superman game. Because, I mean, let's be honest. We all know they can pull it off. They made those Batman, they yeah. made the Batman games that are amazing. They can do a Superman game easily. So, just saying. We'll get a Superman game. That'd be game sweet. Unveiled. I know. And what would be even more interesting, and I know this will ruffle feathers, but I'm going to say it anyway would be really interesting in a in a smart move on xbox's part is if it's a console exclusive to their system they get superman we get spider-man balances things out and it's gonna ruffle feathers yeah. but i'm telling you they do something like that i'll be like okay i might need to get an xbox again if rocksteady's making a superman mm. game for the xbox because uh it's superman come on come on it would be great i mean when's the last time or ever have we had a great Superman game? Uh, never. We've never had exactly. a good Superman game. Exactly. Like, I mean, Mar- Superman 64 was pretty awesome. Don't, so besides- dude, come <laughs> on. <laughs> dude, we should have a whole episode just talking about how garbage that game was. Uh, I remember renting it from Blockbuster. I just... Throwback, rest in peace. But that game was so <laughs> bad. It was really bad. Uh, golly, I still... I remember, I have a cousin who's like a huge Superman fan. I was a Batman fan in the family. He was Superman. I remember when he picked it up and he was hyped as all get out to play the game. And we started up and we stopped five minutes and he's like, this game sucks. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, it geez. does. The controls are awful. The rings are stupid. Lex Luthor, I don't even know where he's at. The, oh, yeah. oh, gosh. Why? So bad. But, oh, I mean, that'd be know. huge. The thing is, I'm thinking like, you don't really have to have a reason. Like Justice League is kind of past. Yeah. Uh, we don't really have, you know, another big DC movie being released. So I, again, it doesn't have to be tied to that, but it doesn't hurt right. knowing that in six months there's a movie or something like that, or there was one just released within the last six months. But I mean, 
why not? That would be that would sell consoles. Yep. Especially if it was an exclusive, it would definitely sell consoles. Uh, it would be a huge get for Microsoft if they get it. Um, but yeah, that'd be. Again, I, I like. I wasn't Arkham Asylum. I played but never finished. It got a little too repetitive for me. Mm. I don't even think I ever played Arkham City. Oh, dude. Uh, dude. But uh, what was the the last one? Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight loved it. Loved it. Great game. So. I mean, if 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 we're gonna trust a, a superhero game to anybody, why not Rocksteady? Yeah. Why not? Why not, Adam? It's 2018. But he's super. Superman is just a hard guy to make a game for yeah. because of his abilities. Yeah, but I don't know. I like, think they could do it. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. They Sony Santa Monica took a character that's basically you know a quote unquote godlike character. It made it a relatable story. It's all about how you write the character, how you use the character, and then what kind of gameplay elements you can get in there for his abilities to make it interesting. That's all you got to do. I know that's like really hard to do, but it can be so done. I'm even thinking, yeah, I'm kind of thinking like, is it an origin story? Like he's finding out how he, you know, with each power he's getting. Cause like you think of like, again, God of War, you're kind of re. You're not relearning them, but you're unlocking different abilities and moves, yeah. like figuring out a way to do that with Superman. Because, and again, like, how does he die? You know, you've got these enemies if you're in fights, knowing Superman's only really, they have certain things with kryptonite. Like, yeah. that's some of the hard things that come with Superman yeah. because he's so powerful. But depending on how you write it, that's where the writing is key. Like, you're talking about, depending on how you write it, that's where you can you can make it all work. Yeah. It and is, would, is in storytelling. And I would even say like, you know, cause I think one of the things that's a struggle with these kind of games is developers feel like they have to find a way to justify Superman dying or something. Have some fun with it. If Superman's going against just a bunch of regular criminals or something, which is regular bullets, let him be invincible. Let people feel that power of being Superman. And if he's going against some alien tech or something, then yeah, you know, he's going to take some damage. Like that that's the thing about Superman. You gotta have some fun with it and you gotta let the players enjoy some of that power of being Superman a little bit. You know, you don't just take it away and make him just a just like any other uh superhero, because then he's just he's just not Superman. He's not fun to play as. So you gotta let yeah. people feel that power of being Superman a little bit, a little bit of that that invincibility. Um and then with some enemies, you don't have that because that's how Superman would be in a real fight, you know. I think it would be really interesting is if there's a fight in there with Doomsday, because you know Doomsday from the comics has killed Superman before. And so if you have him going uh, up against you in the game, you know this is going to be a serious fight. So it just I, I think there's so much they could do with a Superman game if they did it right. And I don't know what the exact answer is to that, but I think just if you let the players uh, really feel like Superman, kind of like how the Arkham games really let you feel like Batman in a lot of ways, Man, what a game that would be, you know. And in all honesty, it would probably be better than the Spider-Man game if they did it right. Just saying. Mm. So, yeah. But that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. I'd love to see it happen. But we'll have to wait yeah, and see. Well, let's, let's read a couple of the, the dear listeners, some from the Facebook group, some of their, their hopes for E3. Um, let's see here. We've got Alex Bird saying, I really want some confirmation on Final Fantasy VII. Mm. He said, yep. if Same it's push pack, I'll cry. But <laughs> I said, brother, you may be crying a lot. Yep. There's been a lot of things out there that does not look like Final Fantasy VII is going to be getting much uh, confirmation release date. I don't even know if we'll see anything on it, really. I think I read but a them, couple months ago that they were just now hiring like level designers for the game. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> Like, yeah. oh, come on. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that, who knows? Again, maybe Sony pulls that, pulls something out true. that we're not aware of. True. John Ryan Riley says his big thing he's hoping for is unfettered cross play of all games that are multi platform across all gaming devices. Mm. PlayStation could honestly use the help right now. I don't know if that's necessarily true uh, with Microsoft smashing the Xbox slash PC barrier. So he's saying, Compared to Xbox PC having a lot of those, like Unity without the barriers, he's saying PlayStation could use help with that. 
but fair enough. Uh, Richard Merkin says Sony lets us change our names. Oh, dude, Who please, knows? please, Shuhei. I feel like that's just going to be something that just happens one day. I don't know if they're going to announce that. You at think? A, you think at they'll E3. just drop it one day? I think I think they are. I think one day it's going. There may be some sort of like, you know, on the you know right now we're like five point five point six six point oh name changes are in there. I'd be okay. You know, I don't know. And there may I don't know if the because does Microsoft still charge for that? I think it's like ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah, there'll probably be a charge because you don't want guys just changing it every day. Sure. But um, I, I think so. Uh, let's see here. Micah Hendricks says Resident Evil 2 remake. Ooh. He says Kumito Ueda's new game. Mm-hmm. So that's the guy apparently who made Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Okay. Now, I did see something from Greg Miller on Twitter. He was talking about this... Uh, Prey of the Gods game. It's like a oh, spiritual yeah. successor. Oh yeah, you seen that? The Shadow, dude. That game looks epic. Right. That game oh, looks man. so good. It's like Zelda plus Shadow of the Colossus. So we may not get this new game from this guy, but we may get somebody may get to show that at in their showcase, and that that would be a, a fun be get. Nice. I'd love to see more of that game. Yeah, Jesse Knopp says a new Tales game. So I'm assuming like a Tales of Basiria or yeah. Tales of, and he also is calling for a Logan Sharp return to TRG, the Facebook group. Let me let me just say this. I will be back in the Facebook group for E3. Let me just say that right, right now. I will Hot be back take, for E3. Big, big news. Breaking news. Because I was thinking about that. TRG for E3. I'm just saying, man, because like, dude, E3 is just so much fun in the group around that time. We got the live react threads going. We got everybody freaking out. It's like the group's on fire. It's an amazing time. To be in the face no group. So so I'll be back for that. I will be back for that. Yep. Uh a couple more here. Travis Crane says Doom 2. Not Ooh, yeah. definitely potential there. I think that's a good one. That's Potentially good. he says a new Dragon Age, mm, Final yeah. Fantasy Fantasy Final Fantasy 7, Episode 1, imminent release date. That is a hope. Yeah. That is we'll see. Uh, and then he says he is similar to you in this two brand new blockbuster IPs from Microsoft. Yep. Uh, which, again, I think they have to. They've got to do something. Oh, and yeah. then lastly, Josiah Armstrong saying a release date for Pokemon and a new name for it. My dude. So, My dude. There it is. Thanks for uh, commenting, dear listeners. Yeah, man. AKA Facebook group. Fantastic stuff. Well, dear listeners, thank you for checking out this episode of the Reformed Gamers. But before we let you go, some recos. Adam, I know we're doing this one off the cuff because there's literally no show notes for this episode. But uh, anything, anything you want to recco to the to the dear listeners this far out? Uh, well, since we didn't get to talk about what we have been reading, I finished the Cost of Discipleship. I can okay. recommend that again. The first half of the book, uh, you know, when you get towards the end of a book, for me at least, I'm like I'm already looking to what's next, mm-hmm. so I don't always get out of the end of the book what I get out of it at the beginning. But uh, again, I love Bonhoeffer, so I would recommend the Cost of Discipleship. Um, but yeah, I took up your reco from uh, your reco from last episode. I've got a vacation scheduled. There you go. So get it, man. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to keep up to your standards. You know, I, I my standards. <laughs> uh, you tell me to sp- go on a vacation. I schedule a vacation. I you mean, tell me to jump. I say how high. Dang, dude, I didn't know I had that much power you over you. Tell me to play Persona 5. I played Persona 5. <laughs> what do you want from me, Logan? <laughs> oh, snap. Okay, I guess. All right. Uh, give me a million dollars. Is that a right? <laughs> I can't. That's... No, I, I got to have it first. I can't do it if gotcha. I don't have I, I, it. I hear you. I, I, feel, I feel you on that one. Uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, as far as my records go, uh, there's this book that I'm going through uh, currently called uh, Not a Daycare by Dr. Everett Piper. He is the president of Oklahoma Wesleyan University. And he's just kind of going over the state of college campuses today and and some of the um, kind of, what's the word? The more controversial stuff that's going on there and, and what it's like to be a, a president of a college and have to go against that stuff and and handle some of that stuff. Um, especially as a Christian and man, is it, it's, 
it's a frustrating read just reading some of the stories of of how some of the students are reacting and um and how some of the professors are just kind of um uh, not really challenging students to really study and learn um they're just kind of going with the flow to to appease um some of some of the students um really good read really challenging read i don't think uh you know we'll agree with everything me, me and dr ever mm-hmm. piper i don't think we'll agree on everything uh but there's a lot in there that's that's really uh really solid and, and it's a really good read uh, i'm looking forward to finishing it not because i'm tired of it because i'm like this is I really enjoy this book. Um, so that's one reco. Um, my other reco is, uh, this is a little bit of a nerdy one, but if you guys are into anime at all, look up the, this anime. I think it's, I think it's new, like in this season of anime, uh, called Megalo box. It's, it's this show where it's, they, they drew everything in like HD up to today's standards. And then they purposefully scaled it down to make it look like, an older classic anime like Samurai Champloo mm. or, uh, or it's not Samurai Champloo even, but like Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, those kind of classics. It looks fantastic. Uh, really cool uh, first episode. Um, so go ahead and, and give that a shot. You can check that out on, on Verve. Crunchyroll, I think, is where it's primarily hosted. Uh, you can get the subtitles and stuff like that. Cool show. Um, but yeah, if it, if it tanks after the first episode, I... Uh, I hold no responsibility or no accountability on that one because I I didn't know. I didn't know. First one impressed me. First one impressed me. I'm like, okay, cool. Because I think that's the one I watched. Anyway, it looks cool. Just check it out. See what you think if you're into anime. If you're not into anime, just ignore this and go take a vacation. (laughs) So, uh, anyway, dear listeners, uh, thank you for checking out this episode of The Reformed Gamers. As always, you can head over to patreon.com slash The Reformed Gamers to pledge your support for the show. Uh, even uh, uh, even amounts as small as just a dollar a month help this show. Uh, keep it going. Keep us growing. And plus, you get sweet perks along the way. Like we said, uh, you get early access to all of our episodes, even ones we record a couple weeks out. You get access to those. You get uh, an entry into our monthly game giveaway and things of that nature. And then you get access to our Patreon-exclusive show, The Loot Box. It comes out in the off weeks that our new episodes come out as well. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at TRG Podcast. You can head over to the Facebook group. Uh, please answer all three questions, and we'll see about getting you in there. Uh, and like I said, my inevitable return will be in E3. So I guess by the time this episode comes out, it'll be a week from this episode dropping, I guess, if I'm doing math right. But I normally don't do math right. So you can also... Uh, head over to the website, thereformgamers.wordpress.com, where we upload uh, show notes for this episode. We also do uh, different articles throughout the month, uh, mainly focusing on a lot of reviews uh, and getting those out, previews and things like that. And you can actually see videos of our, you can see previews, like video previews of the articles of the games that we write about over on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash thereformgamers. Check that out. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload. And, uh, yeah, I think until next time, dear listeners, GG and amen. Amen.